Let's focus. Uh, everybody's phone's on silent. I didn't want to it. How you doing? You good? Mm-hmm. So we're making roasted potatoes, macaroni and cheese, a salad, the steaks. <laughs> and I have a special dessert. Hey guys, Harry here. All right, so today you might notice something a little different. We're not in the car eating. So today you're cooking with Harry and... Crystal, my name's Crystal. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna souffle some steaks. And if you're not familiar with the process of souffleing, it's pretty much, you put the steak in a bag, you vacuum seal it airtight, you put it in a hot bath at a certain temperature, and you cook it for about two hours. All right, I have to clear something up. So in the video when I was making it, I was pronouncing the word sous vide wrong. The proper way to pronounce it is sous vide. I kept saying sous vide for the sous vide. I sous vide a few times. Yeah, that sous vide did a good job, look. And Daniels was trying to help me out by pronouncing it right, sous vide. But I think it's because I was probably a little anxious, maybe a little nervous, because this was my first time doing this. And I didn't notice until after I made the video that, oh my God, you were pronouncing it wrong. I was gonna scrap the video, honestly, but I'm like, you know what? It's a learning experience. People make mistakes all the time. But with that being said, enjoy the video. And it's pronounced sous vide, not sous vide. <laughs> oh Lord. Now also what we're gonna make, we're gonna have some roasted potatoes. And we also are gonna have Macaroni and cheese made by me. And we also have a special. I have a special homemade dessert that I'm gonna make from scratch. A shout out to Officer Daniels. Thank you for letting us use his beautiful kitchen. We are here in Denver, Colorado, so stay tuned. And Libby, what do you want on your steak? You want salt, black pepper? Well, her name's Crystal. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Hey y'all, my name's Libby Higgins, and this is my country kitchen. Come on and get you some. <laughs> hey guys, Tammy here. And I'm cooking steak. Fuck you. You watch the big <laughs> No, you got a real one. <laughs> So what we're gonna start with first, we're gonna chop up some vegetables. Officer Daniels is gonna get the hot bath ready for the souffle. But you know what? Hey, Officer Daniels, come join us. Since it is your house. <laughs> Hello. Hey, how you doing? I'm excited. You know, I love cooking some steak. Yeah, so I souffle a few times. I've noticed, I've seen it on his social media that he's into cooking, right? Recently and got into cooking. So I'm still learning too, but the one thing I learned is sous vide. And I think Crystal's gonna love it. Now the sous vide, I mean, you can say it's extra, but the sous vide, I guess, it, since it slowly cooks the steak, it tenderizes it. And you get a perfect cook every time. So basically you're just putting a steak in water and boiling it in Pre a pot. Pretty much. No. So, but you had to buy a fancy thing called sous vide. Yeah. So the sous vide machine keeps the water at the exact temperature you want your meat to cook at. So there's no overcooking, no undercooking. Ooh, my chopping is horrible right now. Whatever temperature you set the sous vide at, it just keeps it at that temperature, like you said. Can you make uh, fish galettes in there? You can. Can you make a uh, hamburger in there? Yes, you can. Can you put a chicken breast in there? Yes, you can. Can you put Little Debbie's in there? No, you can't. That's a deep fryer. Different machine. Have you ever had a steak from made uh, out of a uh, souffle before? No. No? Never in my life. That's why I wanted to come here. He said, hey. Probably um, actually have. Most steakhouses cook all their meat with, in sous vide. People don't know that, but that's how they prep their meat. It's fancy, and we're in a fancy house, so why not? And we're with a fancy lady. Fancy lady. Well, I've never had souffle. <laughs> I've never souffléed my meat, never. Sorry guys, I got out of frame. I'm over here grabbing stuff so I could 
chop. When was the last time you had a nice steak? Oh, Lord. I don't even know. Uh, I can't tell you the last time I had a steak. Last time I had any kind of good meat product, I bought this little pack from Aldi. It had six little Salisbury steaks, right? And you take it out and you put it in the oven and all the seasons on it and everything and you cook it. And that's the last time I had steak. And what about yourself? A couple days. Was it one that you made or you went to a restaurant? One that I made. All right. Well, thank you for letting us use your house and let's get that bath ready for the steaks. Let's do it. Takes 15 minutes to fill up. Two minutes. Oh. of blood. I'm gonna puke. I'm so glad that's on camera. It is? <laughs> They're all running. <laughs> that one definitely. Alright, so since the soube takes so long to cook, we're gonna start with that first. And we have three beautiful ribeyes. Can't go wrong with a ribeye. Yeah, you can't go wrong with a ribeye. Now, how we're gonna season it, I guess we're gonna do it traditional. I like salt and black pepper, specifically coarse uh, salt. I don't know about yourself. Love me some coarse salt. Crystal, what do you want on your steak? Let's see. Just put some uh, pepper, salt. Listen, I'm telling you, the buttery steakhouse, Kinder seasoning salt. Let me sniff it. Game changer. Look at this guy. He looks like he knows how to- That's Mr. Kinder. Season a steak. Mr. Kinder's on there for a reason. So, all right, I'm going back to supervising from the side. Mark. We're going to keep his plate safe. We're going to do all three with salt and black pepper. And I think I'm going to infuse mine with a little bit of buttery steak. I don't know about Daniel's, but I am. My favorite thing. All right. I'm going to season this. I say coarse salt. I just like the bite, the crunch that it yes. gives on the, on the steak. And it's not overwhelming, because if you put... Sorry, Daniels, I'm not trying to get salt on the floor. Oh. <laughs> it's a kitchen, man. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I make a ton of mess when I cook. It's all over the floor. So, the reason I like coarse salt... And don't be afraid to salt your meat. You want that stuff salty, right? And you're going to lose some when you're searing it, so don't be afraid. Obviously, you can add a little if it's not Here you go. salty enough. Yeah, a lot of the salt falls off. I'm big on salt, so I like a lot of salt. If something just doesn't taste right, add some salt. I guarantee you it'll make a difference. Salt and black pepper. So this meat is falling apart right now. Yeah, this is tender stuff. It's super tender, you could just tell. I'm not a chef, mind you. Just because I have this cool apron, doesn't mean I'm a chef. So if I do something wrong, bear with me, I apologize. But as long as it tastes good, that's pretty much my goal. And this, you like yours peppery because this has pepper in it. So. Yeah, I like a lot of black pepper also. Right. So this has pepper in it. I put black pepper in mine, but it's all right. I love black pepper. That might be wrong. Oh yeah, it does have pepper. It, it does it have has red bell pepper. 20 milligrams of sodium. <laughs> so now what gave me this idea to do this, I figured it'd be fun to cook with Crystal and with Officer Daniels. And mind you, I initially said this was gonna take about two hours. We've been here about six hours prepping, figuring <laughs> things out. This is my first time doing this, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna come out good. All right. And I will tell you, when uh, when I went to the grocery store to get all this food with him, I told the man that these were my sons. <laughs> and he didn't know what to think. He didn't know what to think. He looked from him to him to him to him, and then he said, well, get yourself a bottle of wine. And I said, sir, I'm not, I don't <laughs> I'm not drinking because I get wild. And uh, then he looked me dead in my eye and said, get two bottles. Oh. So I'm gonna be heading back up to the grocery store after this is done. Do you think he thought we were your, your kids? I think he didn't know what to think because he kept don't looking be, at y'all. I think he possibly thought that you were with both of us. What do you mean with both of us? Why would he offer you to get yourself two bottles of wine? A sandwich. Ooh, that steak is looking good. So for me, it's the concentration on Officer Daniel's face. Right. I noticed that he takes anything that he likes to do as a passion. Yes. And as soon as we brought up this idea to him, he was all for it. I was like, come right now. Like, all we, we'll it. be there in a week. I'm like, no, come right now. I was trying to see if I had meat residue on my <laughs> This is a brand new Moo Moo. And I think we got meat residue on it. 
you know what? Okay. That's all right. You know what? We were trying to get Crystal a, a chef's apron, but we couldn't find her one. But this is a nice cute gown. It's Could nice. pass for a chef's apron. All right, so the steaks are seasoned. Here's one of the key features of sous vide. Now, obviously, if you don't have a, uh, a vacuum sealer, you can always do a uh, freezer Ziploc bag, push all the air out, works the same way, or you do the water displacement to get the air out, and then zip it. Um, but we got a vacuum sealer, so that's what we're gonna do. The easiest way to get your steaks into these is to make a lip so that this stays open. I just have a question. If you don't have that other thing, can you staple it at the top? No. You need to seal the bag somehow. Well, if you staple it all the way, like, all the way, it'll be, I'll just go back there. No, you're fine. There can't be no air in the bag. What I like is it locks all the juices in here. So this is what we're doing. See how it keeps the bag open when you fold the, the lip up like that? Slide that in there. These are so tender. So dang tender. Yeah, these are very tender. They're almost falling apart. So I wonder how this is going to be after we sue it, but we, I guess we got to wait and see. So these are kind of uh, thinner on the thinner side for ribeyes. So I think we're probably only going to have to do these for about an hour in the water bath. I personally like, I like a thick steak, about an inch. What would you say an inch would take if it was an inch thick? Um... At least an hour and a half. Okay. An hour and a half to three hours is like the... You don't want to go over three hours, but anything in between an hour and a half and three hours, you're, you're golden. Crystal, how do you like your meat? You like it thick or you like it thin? Hold on, let me get over here. I like my meat thick and thin. I like my meat however I can get it, however I can take it. Okay, right. moving right along. Well, let's get these In the back. Oh, and one thing we always do in the kitchen, you clean as you go. It makes it easier at the end when you're washing dishes. Um, that's something that my mom taught me at a young age. Shout out to my mom, and it'll help you in the kitchen. All right, so the steaks are in the sous vide. They're cooking right now. They should probably take about what? What do you think, uh, Daniel? It's late. Very late. And the steaks are thin, so what we're gonna do, we bumped it up to 140 for an hour. And we should still get a perfect steak. So. Now meanwhile, we're gonna do these roasted potatoes. A little olive oil, coarse salt, black pepper. Look at these nice little potatoes. So we're gonna put this in the oven for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes you think, at 400 degrees. I'm not good at potatoes because I'm keto, so I don't eat I'm carbs. taking I'm taking a rough guess. Go ahead. Ever since I started cooking, it's always been like low carb, so I still don't know how to prepare potatoes. All right, we're gonna pop these in the oven, and hopefully they come out good. Fingers crossed. Hey, shout out Fit Soda. This is our new flavor, not even out yet. Rainbow Sherbet. What? Oh yeah, so delicious. The anti soda. Let me see. Fit Soda Rainbow Sherbet. There's a picture of ice cream. Let's see if it tastes like ice cream. No carbs, no sugar, no calories. You got BCAs, you got electrolytes. It's bomb, it tastes good. Okay, got it. All right, I'm making Kraft macaroni and cheese dinner. You can eat this alone or with food. I thought we were making baked macaroni and cheese. No, this is macaroni and cheese. Okay. Three ingredients, butter, milk, packet of cheese. Now there's directions on the back to tell you how much to use. I've never used that, I've been making this for 30 years. What I do is look at the butter and think, oh, what's a good amount? And then I chop it and place it in here. We're not measuring. We're not measuring. Okay. We're taking the milk and pouring. All right. I eyeballed it. Last most important step, you have to do this to get all the cheese from the top to the bottom. And carefully place it in here. And the most crucial step of all, because if you forget this part, 
it's going to be inedible. You got to stir it. How old were you, would you say, the first time you made macaroni and cheese? Nine. Nine. Left it home alone. And uh, now see here, I put a little bit too much milk. That's why we're going to let it set. You let it set for a while, and it will get thicker. And you just keep stirring till that that big hunk of butter disintegrates within there. Sometimes you could even take this if you're feeling really fancy and just sprinkle some black pepper. That's only if you're fancy. Would you like to taste it? All right, and that's how you make macaroni and cheese. You just put this to the side. Okay, no cheese? The cheese is in the, this. That I was one. thinking cheese on top, breadcrumbs. It says, put in a pot and stir, which I already did. Put ingredients in, drain and add, and that's what we did. I was saying nothing about breadcrumbs. All right, bon appetit. So we're making a salad. Chris is gonna make a homemade ranch. Now, I've never made one of these before, so we'll see how what goes into it. This is the best ranch on the planet. What makes it the best ranch? Because it's, it's delicious and you use buttermilk. Two ingredients, well, three. Because I like to make a three ingredient dish. Mayonnaise, buttermilk, and a packet. If you have something that's in a packet, you know it's gonna be good. Now, so what goes first? So I do the mayonnaise first. And with the mayonnaise, you do have to measure because this is precise. Okay. One cup of mayonnaise. And he loves mayonnaise. Loves it. You're gonna okay. take the mayonnaise and put it in here, like so. Now, a tip for me is then you do the buttermilk because the buttermilk will wash it out of here. I've honestly never made homemade ranch. So this is my first time seeing it be made, honestly. Let it put that in and see how it washes it out? Virtually clean. Then the most important part, the spices and seasonings. I don't know what's in here, but whatever it is, does the job. Has a green color to it, you see there? And then you're just gonna mix, like so. Looks like you've done this quite a few times in your life. Well, usually I have one of those whisk things, but I couldn't find one. So we're just gonna do it like this. And hopefully you will not make a mess as I'm doing at this point. The next most crucial step is to put it in the fridge for I don't know how long, an hour? Chill 30 minutes. And what happens if you don't? Then it's gonna taste like this. And nobody wants that. Mm. The fridge makes the flavors infuse. Nice choice of words. <laughs> wow, that looks like ranch to me. And then, that's it. Can I get a taste, please? You wanna taste it before it's been infused? Yeah, so I could get a taste profile before and after it's infused. Let me try. Oh no, I had to stir it up a little bit more. And you notice I did put it on my mouth and then put it back in there. Mm. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, so the roasted potatoes are almost done. The souvé has a couple minutes left. Crystal made her homemade ranch. We got the macaroni and cheese. We're gonna get the salad ready. I believe Officer Daniels is outside prepping the grill. Ah. It hasn't felt like summer lately, it's been raining. But lately I haven't been able to grill due to the weather, so hopefully the weather clears up here soon. Yeah, my chopping skills aren't the best, but I make it work. Mm. Now, one thing I will say, there's white onions and then there's red onions, right? I wonder why they call them red onions if they're purple. Um, it's never really made sense to me. Chelsea actually sent me to get red onions. And I said, they don't have red onions, but they have purple onions. And 
She called me an idiot. <laughs> I didn't. I thought the same thing. You I, can see here. Look, folks. Purple. Why is it a red onion? Don't send me to get a red onion when there's purple onions available. All right. So we're getting the salad ready. I got the red onions, fairly chopped. I'm not very technical. So like I said, I'm doing the best that I can. I'm trying to make it work. So work with me, bear with Harry. This is something, a new segment I'm introducing. I'm trying to see if you guys like it. And if you guys like it, feel free to give us some feedback. I'm interested in to see what kind of dishes you guys would like for us to cook or for Harry to cook. I don't make salads too often. All right, so we're not gonna wash it. We're just gonna throw it straight in from the bag. I know I'm gonna hear in the comments below. You're gonna get a parasite. If I do, I do. Or if the lights turn off, they turn off. That's a sign right there. But we're gonna keep rolling, okay? So we have some uh, butter lettuce. Never had butter lettuce before. We're just gonna sprinkle a little butter lettuce. Do you, uh, when you make a salad, do you add vinaigrette to it or you use just ranch? Yeah. Just ranch. I'm sorry? Yeah. What bowl? Oh, okay. It's all right, it's a sign. We're pushing it to the limits, folks. It's all right. Love bell peppers. I think it's the, I like the sweetness, the colors. Thank you, Daniels, I appreciate it. Ooh, nice. What do you think about my knives, guys? I love that they look like they're wood grain. Bell peppers in. I've been meaning to do a cooking segment with you guys for a while, but I just haven't had the chance to. But I'm glad I'm doing it now. All right, look at it. I threw the whole bell pepper in there. All right, the roasted potatoes should be ready. Let's check on that. Okay, the roasted potatoes are ready. The salad is ready. The grill is ready. Is Crystal ready? That's the real question. What? your salad. With my hands? Yeah. Salad's <laughs> All right. All right, vegetables are chopped. Salad's ready. Now I'm gonna toss my salad. Toss in my salad. You wanna help me toss my salad, Crystal? I'll toss your salad for real. All right. I think I got it. I think I got it. All right, tossing that salad. Never thought tossing my own salad would be so much fun. All right, so we're back. How's it looking? They probably don't look that appetizing right now, but we still got a little ways to go. So now that they have cooked, to the perfect temperature, we are gonna slice, the, slice these open. And the key to a good sear on a sous vide steak is patting the meat dry before you throw it on the grill or into the pan. So always get you some good paper towel and we're gonna pat these dry after we cut them open. And then we got this to let the juices drain underneath it without it collecting in the bottom. So we got all these juices in here. Now what you can do, and I've done this before, so obviously all these juices are gonna drain into the bottom pan here, and I have saved it, and then after you sear it, drizzle it on while these rest. Um, if you wanna dump those, these two out while I cut this last one, just dump it right out in there. You dump it in here? Yeah, the whole thing. Don't be scared, don't be shy. Don't be scared. I'm a little shy with my meat sometimes. Hold on. Same. Oh, it smells good. It smells bomb, don't it? Wow. Look, how, look at those, bro. Most important thing, we gotta flip these and we're actually gonna take some paper towel out with us and do this again on the grill right before we throw them on the grill. We got the sear setting going mm. on the uh, grill, nice and hot. I did these for uh, Chelsea. We did fillets actually, cause she wanted fillets. Still came out amazing. What's your favorite cut of meat? Definitely the ribeye. Yeah, I want to say flat iron for me or ribeye. I'll give you a flat iron. <laughs> what? All right, let's head to the grill. All right, let's head to the grill.
我好饿的。You have a place to put them? Yeah, we need to wrap them up. Left? Left, the right of the... Uh... Steaks are done. We got a nice sear on them. Mm. Don't forget this one's Crystal. Where is Crystal? Don't forget to eat the macaroni and cheese, boys. I I'll pass. I'm good. I'll pass. That's carbs, yeah? Carbs. I can't. Looks delicious though. Are you keto too? No, I'll, 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 I'll eat it. Scoot over, let mama sit down. Here you go. Let me sit down. I'll tell you this much, it's tender. All right, let me see yours. Nice little fat. Oh wow, that looks good. All right, cheers. Cheers, cheers bon appetit. <laughs> mm. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. I'm just gonna. I don't know if Perry likes it because he ain't dancing. Is that not the perfect steak? This tender. Mmm. Mmm. It's like the, the lower grade meat and we still made it bomb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is not prime and it's still good. Yeah, that soup did a good job. Look. After we're done. Look how tender it is. We can eat the cake I made. Oh, you made dessert? I made this for y'all. You cut that perfect. I cut it perfectly. I'm good at cutting. Wow. And how long, drizzle? How long did it, did it take you to make this? 10, 15 minutes. I really should eat some salad. Okay, we're gonna give this macaroni a shot here. Let's see. Mmm. Mmm. You did a great job. Well, you know, we forgot one thing, the potatoes. Oh, here we go. Oh, the potatoes. I can't eat those either, but. Careful, this is still really hot. <laughs> you know what? You just put it right on me. Did I overdo my potatoes? Did I overcook them? I don't think so. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna taste it. I think they look perfect. I think they look good. Just give it a bite. Mmm, crunchy. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. That's good. What is, uh, olive oil and just salt? Salt and black pepper. Okay. See, I'm a garlic guy. Mm. I'm gonna give it some, some garlic powder, garlic salt, maybe a little onion powder or something. I want like some of this. Yeah, I need salad. Definitely need a salad here. This was the most crazy random cooking video ever. Never done it before. This is none of us have done this before. We cooked our own. I'm glad we did it. Me too. Mmm. And this steak came out phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm already almost done. Let's try this get a little. Mm. Can't forget. That ranch. Crystals. Homemade ranch. Let's try it out. Mm. Mm. You need to add this to the menu at your restaurant. Restaurant. You want to look the crystals? That's a burger restaurant, honey. Oh. Mmm. Mm. Mm. Well, you can cook your burgers, sous vide. It's that red onion inside with that ranch. Mm. What else do you put ranch on? Everything. Mmm. Mm. Pizza. Mm. Vegetables. It's like the all around condiment, I would say. Yep. That ranch is, I, honestly, I have, I've never tasted ranch like this before. I'm not just saying it to say it's good. It's I guess, unreal, isn't it? It actually could have stayed in the fridge for a little bit longer and got thicker. Mm. Well, pardon my reach. Crystal. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna do a baby here. I don't want any of the uh, butter vegetables. Uh -huh. I know. I just want the lettuce. I want to cry so good. 
Why mm. do they call it butter lettuce? I don't get it. Because mm. it comes from the butter lettuce head. Huh? It comes from the butter what head? The head of lettuce called butter. Because mm. it's rich and smooth like butter. Your dessert looks amazing, but I cannot eat that, so you guys can share that. Yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for letting us into your beautiful home. You're very welcome. Thank you, Crystal, for joining us. Group hug. Thank you. I'll see you again. And make sure to leave your comments in the comments below if you would like to see more cooking with Harry and friends. This is not going to be the last video, I guarantee you. But it'll probably be the last time we do it here. <laughs> <laughs> Now get out of my house. <laughs> Harry here checking out. See you next time. Peace. Bye. -bye. Now we can eat for real. I'm going to let that roll a couple seconds afterwards. Bro, you need me to put my weight back on? No, I'm just going to let it roll. What do we have here? Crystal has some explaining to do.